little bhajan. If you listen to the words carefully, you will be able to repeat also. How, what is this related to, you know? When Hanumanji went to Lanka, Sita ji had seen so many Rakshasas, and now this monkey came in front of her. She thought, one more trick. One more trick, you know, Ravan has one more trick up his sleeve. So Hanumanji had to do many things to convince her that he is not one of Ravan's people, he has come from Ram. And one of the names which Hanumanji used there at that time is Karunanithan. Karunanithan. And only Sita ji had used to call Rama Karunanithan. So Rama we have, would have told Hanumanji, if you say this name, she'll know. Karunanithan. So this bhajan is in that Karunanithan. It's very simple words. You listen and you can also follow. Karuna Nitha Prabhu Shri Ram
isn't it? Whichever order he wants. The best, best, best uh, person in this regard was Bhagwan Shri Ramana Mirshi. When you ask him some question, he look at you. <laughs> he may answer. He may not answer. Or he may answer you in one year's time. <laughs> like that. Sometimes one year after he answered that question. Like that. So he, the one who is answering, he has the prerogative to answer in whichever way. Bhagavan did Maya first and Bhakti last. Because it is said that Maya cannot touch the one who has bhakti for Ram. Anybody who has bhakti for the Lord, devotion for the Lord, Maya could never touch that person. So here, now we have to see this last one, bhakti. What is that bhakti by which I can gain your favor, gain your compassion, your mercy? That was the question, right? So this is after number 15, Dohano, you'll see. After number 15. We'll do that one, Chaupai. I don't know how it is there in your book, but a Chaupai consists of four fathers. Eh? Let us see that. Page? 5-4. Oh yeah, in the last, in the end it is all there, in one stroke. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Until that portion, until that line, that is the praise of the path of bhakti. Bhagavan first praises bhakti. And then he'll tell the bhagati ki sadhana kamu bhakani. He says, I will tell bhakti sadhana. 
what exactly is bhakti sadhana, what you have to do. But first he praises. Huh? What he tells about his bhakti sadhana, about bhakti, he says, dharmate birati jogate jnana. He, he first he quotes the shastras. The shastras say, from the following of dharma, we practice all virtues, all righteousness and all goodness when we practice dharma. Then what comes? Birati. Birati means virag, vairagya, which we saw just now. There's another word for vairagya, dispassion. Huh? So once a person follows all the righteous and good things in this world, he will certainly develop vairagya. In other words, you know, there are durgunas and there are gunas, sugunas, right? So Durgana is calm, Krodh, Lob, Moha, Matsara, all of these words you have heard already, right? desire and anger and greed and jealousy and pride and so many Durgunas are there. So those certainly are not the Dharma, they are not virtues, isn't it? So on the other side we have to follow all the virtues. What are all virtues? Well, love and compassion and charity and quietude and consideration and sensitivity and even it awareness for the nature, <laughs> prakriti and everything like that. So all this is dharma. He says when we practice this all virtues properly, that person will develop a natural vairagya as he goes along. But see, if here I am practicing only calm, krodh, lobe on this side, <laughs> desire, anger, greed, how you will develop a vairagya from practicing greed? The more greed, the more attachment, isn't it? More calm or more? Attachment. So, all this is on the Durguna side. On the other side, we have all the Gunas. So, if we practice these Gunas, virtues, then we will get certainly develop this passion. Mm? This is one more way to develop this passion. He's just in this first line quoting the Shastras. Eh? Bhagavan Ram is quoting Shastras to Lakshman. Then he says, Jogate Jnana. Wisdom comes. Wisdom comes from the practice of yoga. Here yoga means uniting with one's own self, the yoga. Huh? By that, if I unite with my own self, all wisdom dawns. All wisdom will dawn. Jnana. He says, Jnana mocha prada deda khana. And this Jnana, which comes, that will give moksha. Veda, who says? Veda. Veda means Veda. The Vedas say. Huh? So that is about uh, practice of dharma and knowledge and moksha. The Vedas talk about practice of dharma to get knowledge and to get moksha. Yoga and knowledge and all such things. But jate begi, but I tell you my dear Lakshmana, that thing which melts my heart very quickly. Jate begi dravau me bhai. Begi means fast. Begi, begi is Vega. Vega has been swift in Sanskrit. Swift. Vega. So our Vega has become Begi. I told you now, you just learn all your Sanskrit words properly. And you have Sanskrit teachers here. Then all your uh, things will come very easily. Begi. Vega. I mean, Jate Begi Drava Umei Bhai Drava means which melts my heart very fast. What is that? He says, So Mama Bhagati. That is devotion to me. So in other words, what he is making a contrast. What is the contrast? Look here. In the Vedas, means Upanishads, it is told you follow this Dharma. Uh -huh. Then you do all of this concentration and meditation and all of these things. And then that knowledge will come. When that knowledge comes, knowledge will bring moksha. This is the path of the, the Vedic path. But then he is telling now, in the second line there, oh, but there is something else which melts my heart very fast. And that thing is called Mama Bhagati, my devotion to me. Bhagata Sukadai. And that devotion gives great joy to the Bhakta. Devo See, look here. When you have to follow the path of Jnana, what really is going on here is a contrast between the path of knowledge and the path of devotion. When you have to follow the path of Jnana, right? Knowledge. You have to study, 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 and then reflect, reflect, reflect. Ponder, then sit down there and meditate. And you know that when you sit to meditate, that only time your mind goes 
That time you want your mind to sit here, but your mind does not sit here. And you want your body to sit quietly, and your body does not sit quietly. Your body wants to twist and turn. And you start a dialogue with your leg. When you sit for meditation in morning time, you start a very nice dialogue with your leg. The leg says, please move. You say, no. <laughs> you know that also. Please move. No. If you don't move, I will die. Then you say, no. Nobody has ever died from a little leg pain before. Then your leg says to you, then why do you want to run the risk of being the first? <laughs> <laughs> then what happened? Who wins in the end? The leg. leg. You see, you can't win that leg. Oh. So, in part of bhakti, a part of knowledge is such a difficult part. Tulsi Daji himself in this Ramayana, in the Uttarakhanda, and in the Kathopanishad, is described as a Kurasya Dhara. That thing is like a razor's edge. Anything you do there, you're in trouble, isn't it? Nishita Duratya, very difficult to tread. Gyan. Bhagavan is saying, why you want to take all that difficult thing? You have devotion to me, my heart will melt and that will bring so much of joy to you. The one little difference between Gyan and Bhakti Mark is, you know nowadays they have started to adopt a new paradigm in vacation, especially when you have a road trip. The new paradigm for a road trip is, in the old days, let us say you're here in New York. Okay, we are going to drive to Chicago. Road trip. Right? So you pack everything into your car and then you start driving towards Chicago. And then you, uh, your mind is already in Chicago. Chicago. And you're thinking, when I will reach there, the kids are sleeping in the backseat. Oh, Mom, when are we going to get there? They always go on screaming. Yeah? Because your mind is? There. So the new paradigm in road trip now, which they are adopting, is forget about Chicago. You're going there, but if you see anything nice here, you stop. You enjoy like anything. You see something nice there, you stop. You enjoy there also. And you may take two days more, but no problem. You enjoyed everything while? Going. going. That is a new paradigm actually for road trips. So, the people, you know, just pull off the main highway, pull off here, take an adventure there, take a, you know, go and see anything you see, any sign on the highway. Pull off the highway and go and see something. Like that. So, this person not only has a nice time when he reaches Chicago, but also on the road he has a nice time. And the old paradigm was, uh, you're thinking, when we'll get there, when we'll get there, when we'll get there. By the time you reach Chicago, you're stressed out. Isn't it? So, the path of knowledge and the path of devotion is compared to something just like this. What is that? Part of knowledge, so much of tapas and so much of study and so much of, you know, all that. Only in the end, mukti comes. Path of devotion, ah, you're happily all the time singing, chanting, reveling in Bhagwan and all that on the way itself. Because bhaktas have great time, you know. Just now when the, when the music started, everybody start also clapping. You have a joy while doing it. Gyan. Om. <laughs> that thing seems very boring thing, isn't it? So this one is, the mark is sukha. And the gati is also sukha. And in gyan, the mark is dukha. <laughs> Only the gati is sukha, you see? That comparison is made by many, many sages and all. So the same thing comes from here only. Because Bhagavan doesn't say it like that, but he juxtaposes the two things there. He puts Gyan here, and next he puts Bhakti. So my, my Bhakti brings joy to, to the devotee. Bhagata Sukhatai. Bhajamana Rama Charana Sukhatai. Huh? You chant the name of Ram. Oh. You attach yourself to the feet of Ram. It gives joy. Like that. So here is a Bhagata Sukhadai. Huh? He says, So Sutantra. One more. He's not telling all the advantages of Bhakti. So Sutantra. Avalambana Ana. What is the meaning? See in Gyan, right? You see all of these people here. 
you ask them when they go to the ashram to study especially in Trinidad ashram in Mumbai I don't know how it went but in Trinidad ashram Sanskrit every single day they have to be in Sanskrit class every day so now the study of Upanishad is dependent on the study of Sanskrit, Sanskrit. you have to study that thing properly so that is, there's a, it needs an, avala, an alambana. Avalambana means to say it needs some support. If you don't have the support of the Sanskrit, it's very difficult for you to really study this thing in depth, to the depth at which we study. So it needs some alambana, you see. So it says this bhakti. And not only that, some preparation. See, we tell if you have to come to our ashram and study, first you have to have some degree. You just suppose you have never been to any devotion you say bhajan is going on here and everybody is swinging and everybody is rocking well not rocking but <laughs> and you come all you do is just join isn't it you also get in the mood and get and just join tehi adhin jnana vijnana and one more thing Knowledge and wisdom actually depends on this bhakti because if you don't have love for Sanskrit, if you don't have love for Vedanta, if you don't have that love, you will never, you will never study it. So those jnana and vijnana, they depend on bhakti, but bhakti does not depend on jnana and vijnana, like that he means to say. So he's making a case for jnana, for bhakti, bhakti tat anupama sukha mula. My dear Lakshmana, bhakti is incomparable, an incomparable mine of joy. That is devotion. Incomparable mine of joy. Milai so santa hoi and kula. And we can only have devotion, uh, have the opportunity to have bhakti only when some saint has blessed us. If we have devotion in our life, that means we have been blessed by some santa. Milai is jo sant hoi anukula bhagati ki sadhana kaukhani sugama pant mohi pavahi prani he says sugama pant sugama pant means easy path easy path so then some people ask but if this is the easy path why take that difficult path take the easy path when this word easy is used in our shastras, please, please do not think that it is, it is easy from the ordinary standpoint. What he means to say easy, it suits more human beings. That is the meaning of easy. I mean, suppose uh, in this country, for instance, right? You make burgers. There are 350 million people in this country, let us say. You make burgers or you make idli, right? And you line up here. All Americans now choose. Who will choose idli? Only you will choose. <laughs> they will only choose burgers. When they see this idli also, what is this? They will not know also, isn't it? So now, if you are the cook and you have to make something for this American population, the easiest thing to make is burgers. Because more people, otherwise all your idli, if you make idli only, it will be left there. It is a thing which applies to most people. From that standpoint, bhakti is easy. It means people will more easily take to bhakti than they will take to yeah, don't think that there is going to be less effort in bhakti. Eh? Not easy from this point of view of less effort. It's not easy from that standpoint. Everybody has to put effort whichever path it is. It's easy because it applies to more people. You can easily get into it like that. You don't need all the qualifications and all of that sort of thing, right? From that standpoint. Now exactly what is this bhakti? That is going to be described. From the next line. See that. Pratama 
महिबे प्रचर अति प्रीति श्री राम जय विशेषण प्रज्ञ मीन दोपेशल नॉलेज मीन्स हव लव फॉर देर फीट लुक है I tell you, this is a very, very, very important thing. Yeah. In the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, you see there's a very interesting thing, which I, which baffled me for many years. See, in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagwan and Arjuna they are having this dialogue, and Arjuna finally gets totally confused and frustrated and everything, and Arjuna says there that now. शिष्यस्ते हम शाति माम त्वाम प्रपन्नम मीन्स आई हैव नाउ सरेंडर टू यू आई हैव बिकम योर टी योर स्टूडेंट नाउ यू टीच मी सो ही सरेंडर्स टू भगवान अर्जुन सरेंडर्स टू भगवान प्रपन्नम प्रपन्नम इज आई टेक रेफ्यूज दिस इज बिगिनिंग बिगिनिंग ऑफ सेकेंड चैप्टर नो एंड एटीन चैप्टर टूडे यू ऑल चैंटेड ऑल्सो सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य माम एकम शरणम व्रज यू टेक रेफ्यूज इन मी मोक्ष आई विल फ्री यू टेक रेफ्यूज इन मी बट अर्जुना ओनी हैज टू से बट भगवान आई टुक रेफ्यूज इन यू इन बिगिनिंग इट सेल्फ इज इन इट आई ऑल माई सेल्फ टू ओल्थ आई विल रेडी टुक refuge so these are two stages which all sadhakas have to go through one stage is what arjuna says in beginning i take refuge in you and bhagwan is still saying take refuge in me the two stages are this thing in the beginning arjuna surrendered to bhagwan his intellect because he accepted that my intellect is confused Huh? He surrendered his intellect. And one Bhagwan is telling him at the eight, end of the 18th chapter, "Take refuge in me. Surrender to me." Now he means to say, "You surrender the ego also." In the end, surrender also the ego. In beginning, surrender the intellect. And the reason is, all of us have lot of reliance on our intellect. And human being is that one being who always think that he knows right, isn't it? we always think what we know is right we all we have lot of uh, uh, abhiman in our intellect and therefore you will hear people in this world they will say also oh what is the need for all of these gurus and all of these things i can read that thing and uh, do it myself isn't it one man came and told us oh puja guru dev guru dev why do i need to uh, come and listen to you and uh have devotion and surrender to you and i don't no need for me to do all that i can easily go and read the book why do i need to come and uh, listen to you guru rasa why didn't you ask the book this question 
you came to ask, should I ask the book? But you cannot ask book questions, isn't it? So in every sadhak's journey, there, there has to be the surrender of that intellect. That sadhak has to surrender that intellect to somebody whose intellect he trusts to be better than his. Hmm? Until that is done, that sadhak is not going to go anywhere. And Arjuna was not doing that in the first chapter. But he is giving this course to Bhagwan. How that intellect is so, so strong. He is giving this course to Bhagwan in the first chapter. And Bhagwan also knows, look, I better keep quiet, let this fellow talk. Bhagwan did not say a, a word. Let him talk. Where that intellect jumps out and thinks he how what the audacity to think he can give discourse to the Lord of the universe also. But until he surrendered that intellect, that dissemination of knowledge cannot happen. All of us have to reach that stage in our life, then only knowledge will start dawning. Hmm? So here now he says Prathamahi Bipra. Charana Ati Priti I am the first thing in devotion. I must have love for the feet of those knowledgeable ones. Those who have all Gyan. I must have love for their feet. That is the beginning of the process of really surrendering that intellect. Nija Nija Karma Nirata Shruti Riti. And now the Shruti has given duty to all of us. By virtue of a Varna Ashrama, we have duty. All of us have our duty, we have to fulfill that duty. No, this is a very long topic, and I would love to talk about that topic. This duty, what happens is we get lost in this fray. <coughs> we have duty as a student, then we have duty as a householder, and when the householder's duty is over, we have to move on. We have duty as a Varna Prasthis, and when that duty is over, we have duty as Sanyasi. Somehow we have picked up the Western style and we go from Brahmachari duty. We go to householder duty and we take that to the end. The other two uh, ashramas, but Shruti has given. You should be looking forward to your children getting married and getting started with their own life independent of you. It is good for them, it is good for your grandchildren, it is good for society, it is good for your mukti, it is good for following shastras, for the tradition, everything. Good for society also. But what we do from that householder's life, we never leave. That means we are not following Shruti. Grandparents should never be bringing up grandchildren. You just came out from one round of samsara. <laughs> you reach here and you are going. You start another cycle. And the Shruti tells see Niratar Shruti Riti. Shruti Riti means what is laid down by? Shruti. That that stage, the moment your children have become gotten married, it is time for you to go to next stage. And that next stage in the Shastras is described as you intensifying your sadhana and your life now has to be dedicated to society. Here you are a family man, here you are a society man. This is what you should be doing, like what you are doing here. And organizing these things and getting involved in this and helping the community and this is in that stage. But we stay in that family life, go for another round of samsara and we make all trouble only there. Why? Because grandparents cannot bring up grandchildren. I, let me just, I'll show you how. Many of your grandparents, na, tell the truth now. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it true that you allow your grandchildren to get away with things and do things which you did not allow your own children to get away with? Is that correcting or not? Yes. You see? Yes. You see what I mean? 
Grandparents cannot discipline children. Children know very well how to go around that grandparent and make them dance. <laughs> One little boy, he's, oh Lord, I'm so desirous of having a bicycle for Christmas. So the, the mother said, but beta, why you have to shout so loudly? <laughs> Bhagwan is not deaf. <laughs> Bhagwan is not deaf. You don't have to shout so loudly. He said, I know Bhagwan is not deaf, but grandpa is a little deaf and he's in the next room. <laughs> he's in the next room there, you know. How smart these little fellows are, you know. But anyway, it is not just we are saying like that. This is all shastric, huh? all shastric. The idea is the grandparents by that time not capable of disciplining the grandchildren. First thing. Second thing is when the parents bring up the children, it is not only that the children grow but the parents also grow in that experience of parenting. It is meant for mutual growth of the parent and the child. When the grandparents bring up the children, the parents are denied the opportunity to grow. And then, so there's another from all sides. The parents don't grow, the children don't grow because they don't have discipline. And the grandparents who were supposed to be in the next ashrama now going toward Mukti, he has gone back into Sansa. From every side, the Shastra tells the thing is wrong. But what my grandparents tell me? Swamiji, you are a Swami, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know when we see little Munna's face. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> they tell like that. Uh, but you, it was supposed to, they were supposed to be brought up by their own parents. <laughs> See, I, I'll show you how parents grow. One parent was telling, listen to this nice story. One parent was telling, when we had our first child, that fellow only sneezed and we call the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we had our fifth child, he swallowed a one dollar coin and we told him, it is coming out from your allowance. <laughs> See that? That, that thing sure proves what? That proves what thing? By the time the fifth child has come along, the parental anxiety has gone. He has grown or not? Yeah, 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 he's grown. That is meant for that thing. Now, this Shruti Riti, I'm worse in anyway. See, when I start with one word like that, I, I just go on. But this Shruti Riti word is a big word. And so it says, Nija Nija Karma means whatever you have in that Varna and Ashram, we are supposed to do that according to the Shruti. That is the second practice of bhakti, you see. Ehi kara phala puni vishaya viraga. If a person really follows the Shruti, he will develop vairagya because the Shruti tells, okay, now I leave these children, leave these grandchildren, I get into the next phase. You know what a wonderful thing? Some years ago, there was a conference at the University of the West Indies. And I was called from a Hindu side, then from Trinidad and Tobago, the Archbishop of the Catholic Church is responsible for the whole country. He was sitting in this side, on my right side. And on this side, there was a Muslim professor. So we had three religious people, and we had to speak about the stages in life. So I went up and I spoke about the stages in life. Shruti Riti. You know when the Archbishop came up, that audience was 95% Catholic. And he's the Archbishop representing all the Catholics in that country. It's the biggest religion. In front of 95% Catholic people, he admitted in that conference that nowhere in any religion are the stages of life laid down better than in Hinduism. The Archbishop admitted. 
Because the rishis have thought about all of these things. There is nothing which they have not thought about. If you thought about this is the stages you go through. If you go through well, detachment will come from that other stage. Birati. Ehikara phala bhumi vishaya viraga will surely uh, develop virag, vairagya from all this. And then tava mama dharma upaja anuraga. And then you know you will develop great love for doing seva for me. Otherwise you are taking up with the children and grandchildren. You are not thinking about doing seva for for Bhagavan. You see? Then Shravana Dika Navabhaktirahi Mamali Larati Yatimana Mahi Shravana Dika Navabhakti Drahi so this is meant what is meant here is the nine types of devotion which you see in Bhagavatam and all you would have seen that thing. Huh? That is Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnuho Shravanam Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vananam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam Nine types of devotion are given in Bhagavat. Very famous nine. Navadavakti. Mm-hmm. So Shravanam, you have you know what is a very wonderful thing? In Bhakti Marg, nine types of devotion given there. And the first one again is Gyan Marg. Marg Shravanam Mananam Nidyasanam. How wonderful Shravanam again. How important this Shravanam is. That is why, you see, in our tradition, we had many blind saints. You, have, you know that? Many blind saints. But we never had a deaf saint. Because this Shravanam is the most important Indriya in spirituality. You may lose any of your other Indriyas. But if you lose Shravanam, you are in real trouble. Means you have to do something to make sure that you can hear. Very difficult. It might be possible, but very difficult. So it's the Shravanam Kirtanam. Shravanam means listening to the glories of Bhagwan. Then singing his glories. Kirtanam Vishnu. Smaranam, remembering all his. <coughs> Archanam. Archanam means doing puja. Vandanam, salutations. Archanam Vandanam Dasyam. Dasyam means being a servant of the Lord. Sakyam, being a friend like Arjuna was a friend to Krishna. Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam. Atmani Vedanam. Huh? Smaranam Padasevanam. Padasevanam means you do seva for Bhagwan. Doing seva. Oh, this Pada word comes quite often. Pada Sevanam, when we talk, we say, whatever my teacher stands for, whatever my guru stands for, whatever the Lord stands for, I stand for, for that thing, not stand for something else. Very, very nice meaning of Pada Sevanam. So, this, that nine type of devotion given there, Atmani Vedanam, merging with the Lord. Huh? You just go, go and do. Shravanam Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedam. Shravanam? Huh? Vandanam. Yeah. Vandanam, one missed out. So like that, those nine types are listed in Bhagavatam. So here Bhagavan Ram is just referring to them, those nine. He said, Navada Bhakti. Huh? To practice that. Mama Leela, Rati, Ati Manamahi. And reveling in the Leela of Bhagavan, Ram. Always go on reveling in his Leela only. Otherwise, we revel in our own lila, you know? Each person is reveling in his own lila. We never take the time to tell somebody, hey, remember how Bhagwan Ram was petting those little squirrels? Huh? How he passed his hand on the back of those squirrels. They were bringing some grains of sand to help build that bridge. And how Bhagwan Ram did like that. We, we don't tell Bhagwan uh, stories like that. We tell our own stories. Isn't it? We like to tell our own Stories. Human beings, I tell you, very peculiar creatures. Hmm? Santa Charan, now see from the next verse. Thank you. 
Basant Charana Pankaj Ati Prema. The other type, next type of devotion is given here. Great love for the feet of saints. So just now it is Bipra in beginning. No? Saints. It says the difference is those who are saintly without having gone through all this extensive study of Shastras and there are many, many, many saints like that. You don't hear that they have studied anything anyway also. They are born saintly. Hmm? See, uh, Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharishi. He did not go anywhere to study any. So Ram Krishna Paramahamsa. They did not study anything. And then there are those who studied in depth things, you see. So they call called Vipra there just now. Here now, Santa Charan. Those saintly ones. Santa Charan Pankaja. Pankaja means the, the lotus feet of the saints. Ati Prema, to have great love for saint. It is a nice story in Mahabharata, you know. After the war was over, they were making, they, they did a big yagna, Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir did a big yagna. Okay, this yagna will have to feed all the saints. So they went and invited all the saints everywhere. And they fed all of them. And when it was all over, somebody came and said, uh, well, really speaking, there is one santa, he is outside the city. And he has not come. So this yagna is not complete. So they all were stunned, you know. They thought all the saints had come. So Arjuna said, Take I no problem, I'll go there and bring him. What is there? Arjuna went there to bring that saint. He said, Baba, you know, we have this yagna and uh, we fed all the saints and only you have not come. You please come and have something. Let us treat you. Then our yagna will be complete. That Santa said, no, no, I don't go anywhere. I sit here only. I, I don't move from this place. I am not coming. Go tell you this and tell whoever there, I am not coming. Everybody, they were waiting on Arjuna. Arjuna came back. When he, he came, his face was fallen, you know. They realized Arjuna uh, failed. He could not bring that saint. Then Draupadi said, no problem, I'll go. They all laughed. Arjuna could not bring Draupadi, will bring. She went there. She said, Baba, what will it, what will it take for you to come there? <laughs> he said, well, you have to give me the punya of 100 such yagnas which you do did there. You have to give me the punya of 100 such yagnas and if I can get that punya then I will come. They only did one yagna. He want punya of 100. Draupadi said the most wonderful thing. Look, I am not an educated person, no, I don't know. But I have heard saints say, I have heard gurus say that every step a person takes to go and meet a saint is a yagna. And here I took hundreds of steps to meet you. Now take hundred and you come. <laughs> <laughs> that saint came. So this kind of line, when it is there in the Shastras, he says, Sant Charana Pankaja Ati Prema, to have great love for the feet of saint. Never we should miss that opportunity. Any saintly person is there anywhere, anywhere, and we find out. Once you find out, you have to go. If you don't know, well, okay. But once you find out, you must go there. Manakrama Bachana Bajana Dhrira Nema. And have I mean, body, speech and mind a rule that we will have devotion for Bhagwan. We must put a rule, we should not cry for anything. The Shastras tell we should not cry for anything in this world. Or if we have to cry, we have to cry for Bhagwan only. You see, Ram Krishna Paramahamsa is to roll on the ground in the sand and he is to cry. And if we have to cry, we have to cry only for the 
for the Lord. We cry for everything in this world except Bhagwan. What a thing. Hey Bhagwan, the Mama Guna Gavat Pulaka Sarira singing my glories. Your hair should stand on end. And Gada Gada Gira Nayana Bahanira. The voice should become choked and tears should come from our eyes. Singing the glories of Ram. That is time to cry. Not to cry for anything in this world. Because everything in this world is guided by karma only. What you can change karma or what? Anything happens in this world is happened by karma. And nobody could change that thing. So what is used to cry for anything in this world? Is it if you have to cry, cry for Bhagwan. Kam Adi, this Lata Mangeshka has sung this chapai somewhere I've heard in some of her movie song. Kam Adi Madar Damba Na Jaake Tata Nirantar Bas Mein Taake He says, my dear Lakshmana, the person who is able to remove all these Durganas from his heart, remove these Durganas from his heart, and I become under the control of that person. That person is able to control me. I am at his behest. Who? The person Kama Adi Madadam Banajaki. The person who is able to remove Kama Adi and, and he gives some more Mother and Damba. These words come in Bhagavad Gita also. Who can remove Kama? Kama means. Well, this karma is why he is given Adi there, you know. Kama, Krod, Mother, Lobha, Moha, Matsara, those words here. They call it Sharvikar. In the end of this Aranya Khan, they'll come back again, these words. So, uh, this Sharvikar, who can remove desire, anger, greed, jealousy, pride, all this ego and all, who can remove that from his mind, uh, arrogance, Mother is given. In fact, in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Shri Krishna said, three of them are the doors to hell. Kaam, Krodh, Lobh, Narakas, Trividam, Narakas, Sedam, Dwaram, Nashanam, Atmanaha. These are three doors to hell. Which three doors to hell? Kaam, Krodh and Lobh. So, Kaam, Adi. <laughs> three doors to hell. <laughs> it's a funny thing, you know, in Sundar Khand. Vidishan tells to Ravan, My dear Ravan, Kama Krodha Madha Lobha Sabha Nath Narak Ke Pant Sabha Parihari Raghubirahi Bhajahu Bhajahi Jehi Sant Siyavara Ramachandra Ki Jai He says there, Kama Krodha Madha and Lobha He says these are the doors to hell. So Vidishan tells to Ravan, There are four doors to hell. Bhagavan Shri Krishna is telling to Arjuna, there are three. three doors to hell. You are safer reading Gita. <laughs> <laughs> Your chances of going to hell will only be <laughs> three. But Kam Adi, the doors to hell. And it's a mother. Mother means arrogance. And Damba means hypocrisy. Damba has many meanings in Sanskrit. Uh, so these type of things, who can remove this from their heart? Bhagavan says, Tat nirantar basame take. Means I am always under his control. Kabir Daji has written a nice doha. Listen to this thing. Says, 
कबीर मन निर मल भया कबीर हज मेर हिज माइंड प्योर सी है कबीर हज मेर हिज माइंड प्योर स्पीकिंग अबाउट हिमसेल कबीर हज मेर हिज माइंड प्योर जैसा गंगा नीर लाइक द प्योर वाटर्स ऑफ द गंगा एंड से नो आफ्टर आई हैव मेड माय माइंड प्योर नो आई डोंट रन आफ्टर भगवान एनी मोर व्हाई तब पाछी लग हरी फिरे भगवान इज रनिंग आफ्टर मी एंड ही सेइंग कबीर कबीर वेट वेट भगवान नो रनिंग आफ्टर कबीर and this is there this ramayana you see bhagwan says the one who can make his mind pure means remove his durgunas from his heart that person is now able to control me the lord also comes under the control of the bhakta and this rama demonstrates this throughout this ramayana he comes under the control of bhakta everywhere in this ramayana i tell you bhagwan says see You all know this. Line said, "Ragukula Riti Sada Chai." Yeah, I, I heard somebody recently told they just such a nice thing, you know. You know, in the old days, there used to be a movie villain. His name was Pran. Pran, you know? Yeah. So Pran and Amita Bachchan, <laughs> they are standing by a bus stop. Yeah. So the bus came, and Pran quickly got into the bus. and went away and amita bachan was standing there so somebody asked well, why amita bachan did not go in the bus he said ragukula riti pran jai baru bachan na jai every day i hear a new thing i tell you just recently only somebody told me this सदी चौफाई से रघुकुल रीति सदा चली आई प्राण जाई बरु बचन न जाए यू सी यू विल नेवर फॉरगेट दिस चौफाई नो आई टेल यू सो द आइडिया इज राम सेस इन आवर डायनेस्टी इन आवर लिनिएज वी विल गिव अप आवर लाइफ बट वी विल नॉट गो बैक ऑन आवर वर्ड्स एंड डू यू नो इन दिस परन्या कांड and in this ramay two times rama raises his bow and he said i am going to remove this rakshas race from this earth and he gives his given his word by raising his bow and when he comes to lanka and he meets vibhishan vibhishan also rakshas is ravan's brother but he goes back on his own word because this devotee has removed every durguna from his <coughs> heart he said i will not go to anybody's house and therefore he sent lakshmana you go and crown to grief isn't it you go and crown to grief go to that palace and cry rama never went i will not go to anybody's house but you see to see that she shabari dekhi ram grah aaye shabari dekhi ram grah where rama came to shabari's house for the devotee the lord goes back on his word every time in this ram and that is the devotee who has removed this kam aadi mad dambana jaake tat nirantar bas mein taaki i am always under that devotee's control so if that devotee tells me to break my word i will also break my word this is the, this is the devotion of a devotee who can remove all of this durgunas from his heart ha bachana karma mana mori gati bhajanu k 
करई निखाम तिन के हृदय कमल महु कर सदा विश्राम दोस्त पीपल हु हैव स्ट्रॉन्ग डिवोशन फॉर मी हु हैव रिमूव्ड ऑल दिस दुर्गुणस फ्रॉम देयर हार्ट ही सेज आई लिव इन देयर हार्ट ऑल द टाइम आई स्टे इन देयर हार्ट एंड दिस इज द एंड सी भगति जोग सुनी अति सुख पावा लक्ष्मण प्रभु चरण नि सिरु नावा ए विधि गए क चुक दिन बीती कहत विराग ज्ञान गुण नीति लक्ष्मण वन ही गॉट दी answer to his five questions he prostrated to the feet of bhagwan ram with great joy in his in his heart and ehi bidi in this way many days passed in chitrakoot and i told you i have something special to tell you you forgot you see no, I oh a <laughs> <laughs> very interesting thing something interesting i told you the interesting thing is here It is, I, I did not make up this one. In, 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 if you if you have been in the northern part of India, if you've been to Prayag or Varanasi and these parts of in those places, they have quite often what is called a Santa San Melan. Mm -hmm. Santa San Melan, where the saints meet, and then they will take one passage like this, and then his this saint will give his view on that passage, and another saint will tell this, and another one will tell that, and in that Santa San Melan, they come up with many. wonderful thing and one thing will they have come up with here i'll tell you this dialogue started with bhagwan ram and lakshmana and lakshmana seeing bhagwan ram sitting very quietly and nicely he asked him these five question and the entire dialogue goes on and in the end here even in the conclusion lakshmana prabhu charanani siru nava ehi vidhi kachuk din biti गहत विराग ज्ञान गुण नीति स्पीकिंग अबाउट दीज थिंग्स द डेज पास बाय एंड देर इज एब्सोल्युटली नॉट वन सिंगल मेन्शन ऑफ सीता जी इन दिस कथा देर इज नो अपेरेंस ऑफ सीता जी इन दिस राम गीता इन अदर वर्ड्स सीता जी डिड नॉट लिसन टू राम गीता एंड वेन दिस कथा इज ओवर the next major katha here is the sita apaharan it means the one who doesn't listen to the teachings of knowledge of the lord who is absent who did not get that knowledge that person will be stolen away by samsara will be stolen away by this this samsara kidnapped sidetracked you see so the the very very important message there by saints is this ram gita everybody should be listening she did not get that knowledge and so ravan represent moha moha took her away delusion did you know what this ram gita is to remove our moha delusion like that ha huh? even in the conclusion her name is not mentioned there so but there is a very mysterious thing also nobody knows where she was she may have been she may have gone first to fetch some water or something so this huh? so many days yeah so many things no not days <laughs> this happened in a few minutes <laughs> what in the last line means to say many days they were doing this thing like that this the sort of thing talking about this thing and about that in rama is to tell puranas to lakshmana and this and that and, and all that all right anyway so this brings us to the end of i think is that way it ends in this one okay i don't have this book this brings us to the end of this ram gita which is a most little wonderful text now i tell you i finished this thing in four lectures that is not justice eh? in four lectures i finished but this thing can go on for days and <coughs> there is many days there is so much to reflect on it all our shastras come down to bear on this little passage so it could go on and on all right so i hope that in these few days that you have these two days you have picked up something from this ram gita so that you also can reflect contemplate do your mananam vichar and all that and you move closer to your own goal huh? okay 
श्यावल रामचंद्र की जय पवन सुत हनुमान की जय और भाई सब संतन की जय श्री सत्य सनातन धर्म की जय नम पार्वती पदे हार हर महादेव हरिओम